There's 20 million people sharing this valley, but there's not enough water for everyone. Mexico City, one of the largest cities in the world, is facing a severe water crisis. Its troubled relationship with water goes way back, about 700 years ago. Legend has it that back when the Mexica Aztecs were still nomads, they were looking for a place to settle down. The gods would signal them to the right place. But they found their special sign on the middle of a lake. So they built their city there, on the lake. They accomplished such a deed by making these artificial floating islands called chinampas. They would stuff mats with mud from the lake bed and fix them to the bottom with tree trunks that would later re-sprout into trees with roots. Apparently, a city made out of floating gardens was quite a sight, even by modern architecture standards. When the Spanish conquistadores took over 200 years later, they built a new city on top, and it's kept growing over the years. The lakes dried out, everything replaced by a gray mass of concrete. Today, only in some southern neighborhoods of the city, there's still some remains of what the floating city was once like. Claudia Medina's ancestors used to work the lands made by these chinampas in Xochimilco. El agua que teníamos antes aquí hace muchos años era agua de, de manantiales. Bueno, mis, mis abuelos decían que antes así eh, que se les daba sed y se empinaban al canal a tomar el agua, porque el agua era cristalina y, y así bellísima. Entonces cuando empieza te digo, a incrementar la demanda hídrica, este, se entuban todos los los ojos de agua y todos los manantiales que había. Entonces, para que no se secaran los canales, empezaron a, a incorporar agua de, de varias plantas de tratamiento que están alrededor de la ciudad. Teóricamente, las plantas de tratamiento tienen eh, la calidad necesaria para el riego agrícola. Obviamente, habría que hacer un, un análisis y, ver, y verificar si efectivamente están aportándola así. ¿no? After drying out everything else, the bulk of the city now rests on the muddy soils of the lake beds, causing many problems. Oh my gosh. This is a bad idea to be on this boat. <laughs> For one, when seismic waves enter this region, the soft soil acts as an amplifier, making earthquakes like the ones in September 19th even more devastating. Similarly, the city is sinking over the soft ground, and that's also connected with water. Let me explain. Around 30% of the city's water is brought by the Kutsamala system, an exemplary feat of hydraulic engineering that pumps water up for a thousand meter seconds gravity from over 120 kilometers away. The other 70% of the city's water comes mostly from underground sources, causing the entire city to sink unevenly at a rate of 25 millimeters a month. Buildings are stored and water pipes break. Almost 40% of the water is lost in leaks because of this. And then getting the dirty water out of the city is another feat of modern engineering. It has to be pumped out through another lengthy system of pumps. Both the pumping in and out of water require huge amounts of energy and lots of money. And yet, there's still not enough water for the 20 million people living in the valley. Around 70% of the city receives tap water for only a few hours a day. Others on a weekly basis. Take Xochimilco, for example. People there are lucky if they receive water on their taps for a couple of hours a week. They rely on trucks that carry the water from a local well to their storage tanks, the tanks that are visible outside houses on every stretch of the neighborhood. Others use animals for the task. Moises Martinez has been living in Xochimilco's Tehuistitla community for almost 20 years. He says his home is not even connected to the water grid. Um, estos tambos de 200 litros son dos veces a la semana, los días martes y los días viernes. Ahorita como hay falta de agua, pues un viernes sí, un viernes no. Y ese es 
un tambo donde almacenamos agua potable o agua de lluvia. Renata Fenton is one of the founders of Isla Urbana, an NGO that's developed an affordable rain harvesting system for people in Moisés' situation. Water is channeled into the Tlaloque. It captures rain from rooftops and channels it through a system of filters to storage tanks, which are already common in around 60% of homes in the city. Uh, rainwater harvesting is something that it's a resource. Currently, we're not using it. But on, on the other hand, it's extremely efficient. Like, it falls on our heads. Literally, where we are, we can collect water and use it. Um, it's also uh, quite immediate uh, because uh, the technology is installed in, in less than one day. And that, that family, during the rainy season, has direct access, immediate access to a very high quality uh, water. So that and harvesting water makes sense, especially for Mexico City, where it rains heavily for nearly half of the year. The city is notoriously prone to flooding ever since the lakes were dried out. It's become a battle against nature as lakes try to restore themselves in the valley as they were in ancient times. A battle Alberto Kellich thinks is pointless to make. Alberto is an architect who's developed a project to transform Mexico City into a modern version of what it was in ancient times. A breathtaking metropolis embedded between lakes and in perfect balance with nature. Dentro de la cuenca se puedan rehidratar unas 10, 12 mil hectáreas. Los lagos podrían crear 80 kilómetros de litoral alrededor del lago. Entonces eso Eh, convertir tierras eh, que no valen nada en, en tierras con frente a un lago extenso, a zonas verdes, eh, incrementar los servicios eh, que, no, que no tiene la zona. Es, estamos hablando que el oriente de la ciudad es la zona más pobre de la ciudad y algunos de los municipios como Chimalhuacán son de los municipios más pobres del país. Si pudiéramos infiltrar eficientemente eh, reforestando la cuenca, aquí habría agua para 100 millones de habitantes, no 20 millones de agua, suficiente agua. The project also involves restoring and cleaning the city's rivers, most of which have been enclosed in concrete and connected to sewers. This is one of such rivers, Rio San Ángel, on the west side of the city, just a few steps away from where Manuel Frías lives. Manuel is an engineer who for many years has tried to get the government involved in another ambitious project to solve the city's water crisis for good. Building a huge dam 125 kilometers south of the city and, this is the interesting part, using geothermal energy to produce the electric power to pump the water up there. As it turns out, the nearby Popocatépetl volcano is perfect for the task, since it's active and close enough to operate the entire system and even more. Entonces es un acueducto de 106 kilómetros de largo con cuatro plantas de bombeo es para dar agua a 16 millones de, de habitantes y dejar de extraer agua subterránea. Todo esto se, lo configuré porque yo mismo decía, bueno, se requiere una planta nuclear especial para el bombeo. Y fue así como surgió el proyecto volcánico Popocatep. Y lo que yo sugiero es que aprovechemos ese gigantesco yacimiento energético. El Valle de México va a ser ingobernable e inhabitable. Se está agravando el problema de seguridad, de agua, de, de energía, por el hacinamiento. Entonces, el problema del agua del Valle de México es el problema número uno de todos los problemas del país. Whether it's capturing rain, Stopping the fight against nature and its lakes, or pumping up water with a volcano's clean energy, one thing is certain, there are enough ideas to fix Mexico City's water crisis. Whether there will be enough political will to do anything about it, well, that's a question that remains open in this election's year. For Physics World, this is Lucina Melesio from Mexico City.